So yesterday you wanted to kinetic term for the various section. So the form that you have then was something like this. Minus one, it denotes that it is in the minus one picture, and then we also have this additional condition that d naught plus d naught bar on psi minus one is zero. Besides, the condition that psi minus one belongs to h minus one. Okay, then. In psi minus one belongs to h minus one means it automatically satisfies that d naught minus d naught bar annihilates it and d naught minus d naught bar annihilates it. But you also impose this additional condition that d naught plus d naught bar annihilates it. Okay. And as I said, we will eventually see that this is part of the gauge condition. The full screen field will not have this condition imposed on it. Okay. But right now, this is what we have. So now we want to ask what is the story in the Roman center. And again, let me proceed with hydronic, where there is only NS and R. If it's type 2, then there will be four centers. Okay, but the analysis will be very similar, and I'll give the result at the Now, here you know that the propagator, oh, I should have also Added that this is after normalization, we are going to fix the normalization later. Okay, because we have not really worked uh, with the correctly normalized propagator. So, roughly, we know that the propagator that we need in the Ramon sector has the following structure. Well, this is a zero mode of the picture changing operator. So, the live case might be that we include a factor of tau zero inverse include tau zero inverse in the binary term. Which of course will work because if you put a high zero inverse, then when you invert it, you will get a high zero automatically. Okay. Except that this is a non local operator. Okay. Sometimes high zero may have a kernel. Okay. If the uh, high zero acting on something gives to zero, then it's inverse, it's inverse as it exists. Okay. And in any case, high zero contains various derivatives because it contains momentum factors. Apply when it acts on a state, and hence it's non local operator. Okay. So you don't want to have a theory with non local factors. Definition will be used for chi, the picture changing operator. Yes. That definition itself can be defined operator. Well, chi zero inverse is something such as chi zero inverse and chi identity. Okay. That is defined. That is defined chi zero inverse. Right? But as I said, it will be a non local operator and it will not be <laughs> defined if chi zero analysis changes. Right? So, this is not a good solution. So what we will do is to give the solution okay, and we will do it in a way that is uh, symmetric in the NS and R sector. Okay, so we will do something that will that is not necessary for NS sector but will just give a more I mean, compact way of writing that. Okay. So we will try to formulate uniform procedure. In S and R. But I should say that this procedure is redundant for the NS sector. And one could do without it. So the chiral inverse was the non local, that was the problem, right? Yeah. Because chiral contains derivatives. Okay. Now apply chiral on the state or a momentum eigenstate. 
Okay, typically, if you have more income factors, but you get in that tax of price. Okay, so this procedure will involve doubling the number of keys. So, yesterday I worked with psi, psi minus 1 plus psi minus half. Now I'm going to introduce another set of keys, psi tilde, which is psi tilde minus 1 plus psi tilde minus 3 half. Okay, which means the psi tilde contains a minus 1 fifth state and a minus 3 half fifth state. Okay, right now, let's not impose this condition, but eventually we have to impose this condition. That is 0 plus 0 bar on psi tilde is 0 as well. And now consider the following action. So you know what you will get 1 over 0 which is infinite, right? So you want to restrict your fields to the bits. So it's really that we are introducing uh, additional fields in picture number uh, minus 3, yeah, right? Yes. Also minus 3, minus 1. Okay. Because I feel like as written is an independent field. Okay. But that as I said is redundant. It's not necessary. You could have done without it. Okay. But just to write a uniform formula for the NS and R sector together. Right. I wrote this one. The inverse space is now h minus 1 plus h minus half plus h minus 3 h minus 1 plus h minus half plus h minus 1 plus h minus 3 because psi tilde yeah. h minus 1 has two copies right psi tilde x yeah. psi tilde and psi tilde x value in h and these two uh, h minus 1 uh, they are not isomorphic or are they? well the Gilbert space is isomorphic okay. but you have two different states right okay. so altogether there are four different string field components okay right one psi x minus one and psi minus half and also psi tilde minus one and psi tilde minus three. But as I said, you could have done three. You don't really need four, you could have said psi tilde minus one equal to psi tilde psi minus one. And you would have gotten back this action. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can easily also see that. If you look at the NS sector part, sorry, you have to yeah, in the NS sector part G is identity, right? Okay. So if you put psi tilde equal to psi. 
then if you see these two terms are identical then there is a minus half here and one way it will give you back the original action here so in any sector if you say x is equal to minus 1 equal to sin minus 1 okay, you will recover the original action Okay. But we will not do that, we will treat psi tilde minus 1 as an independent field as it stands. Mm. What is G is here? G is identity, G is identity on the NS sector and chi 0 on NS and chi 0 on I. Chi 0 inverse or chi 0? Chi 0, chi 0, G is chi 0. So we are not using inverse. Chi 0 is a picture, chi is picture number 1. Right? So this is minus theta, minus theta. Right? And you put a 1 here. So total adds up to minus 2. So if we are trying to insert a picture number in psi side, right? then you would need a chi 0 inverse. So if you take the basic fields as a minus half picture, then you have to use an inverse picture as a right? right? not the not chi 0 itself. Right? And that's not working. Right? So this is perfectly fine because G is a local operator. Which is chi zero. Chi zero is a perfectly good local operator. Okay, it doesn't have any one-on-one term in this application. So the claim is that this, when multiplied with the propagator, uh, it will give me a delta function. Right? Well, we will calculate the propagator from here, and we will see in what sense if this is, this gives you the propagator that you want. Okay, the propagator that you want is here, right? Uh, let me put the g here. In, so this is a propagator you want in Ramon sector. In the NS, if you include NS and R together, you replace the I0 by G. Right? Because it's identity in the NS sector and I0 in the Ramon sector. Also just one comment about this C0 and C0 yes. bar. Yes, if you just put uh, C0, C0 bar on the left and C0 on the right. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean in the end of the class. Okay, I put C0 bar, C0. No. Normal as well, you have to fix any value. Yeah. This is, these are the terms in addition to a psi-psi term that you wrote down over there. In addition to the? To the term that you... No, no. This is one. So this is a full action. Okay, because this contains also the psi minus one. Okay. Psi minus one. So there is no psi-psi term. So psi tilde minus one. Yes. So there is psi tilde minus one, psi minus one. Okay. And psi tilde minus one, psi tilde minus one. But no psi sign. Right? So this is not the idea. Okay, this is a full action. This one is a full time picture. So. It includes NS and R code. Includes NS and R code. Okay. And the interaction terms will be exactly as I wrote down the last time, no psi in the interaction. That the interaction term was written in terms of psi, we are going to use exactly the same interaction term. Okay. Which basically means that the cycle is only the kinetic term, not only the interaction term. Right? And that's what we want. Okay. 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 We will keep it like this, we will have this update. Right? But, uh, to recover that, uh, <laughs> well, we will not have to recover that action. Right? We will work with this action and recover that kinetic term. Because you want to calculate and recover this kinetic term with chi 0 replaced by identity in the NS sector and chi 0 in the Ramon sector. Right? So that's what we will do. Right? We will not we forget about this action altogether. Right? This was for illustrative purpose that we will not. We we'll forget about this action and we'll work no, purely with this action. So is this related with the BP or? No, these are not related to BP. Okay, this, is, this, this will be connected to BP, but this is also related to BP. So it's not that BP is not. Uh, this thing has nothing to do with the BP. So then this is required, required for the peculiar nature of the Ramon set. That's all. Okay, so now let's calculate the propagator.
Okay. So let me write a kinetic term first. So kinetic operator. Which means you have already doubled the number of things. Right? Even in the array sector, when G is identity, 
Okay. You have doubled the number of things. Okay. So that redundancy is of course uh, there. There is no redundancy for the basis state. There is no redundancy for that. Just because we have included h minus one both in our reverse two times in our reverse space and yeah. so there is a redundancy. Basis will not, not so basis will not be there. Yeah. Yes. But psi and psi tilde will both be expanded in that basis. Ah, right? So it's like a block diagram matrix. Mm -hmm. Right? There is a separate block which is giving the sum over the Hilbert space case okay. and on top of that there is a block which is this 2 by 1 block. Okay. This is like if you have an open string multiple defects, right? then the oscillator basis is the same. But you take n square copies of that oscillator basis state right? to describe the open string, the full open string state. Right? Here of course there is no chat pattern factor or anything but nevertheless you have doubled the number of string fields. Okay. So the number of basis states is the same. Okay. Well, it's the same in the sense that our basis states will now be of the form phi r times either 1, 0 or 0, 1. So you have got a new states. So these are the same, okay. but this is a different basis state from this one, the full space of states. Okay, and it's in that big space that you are referring to this. Okay, in the phi r1 space, because other things are fine. Is this clear? Okay. So, let me remind you again, the upper one is was related to psi tilde component, this is the left to the psi component. Okay. And now what it's saying is that in the psi psi part, we have got the propagated factor. Right? It's b0, b0 bar, l0 plus l0 bar in first right? Psi psi tilde the propagator will have no uh, g. And psi tilde the psi tilde propagator vanishes. Is this clear? But now remember that the interaction terms involve only psi. So when you are drawing Feynman diagrams, the only propagator that we ever need is the psi side propagator. Because interaction terms do not have any side data. So as far as Feynman diagrams are concerned, this is the only element piece. And that's what gives you the correct propagator, both in the NS sector as well as in the rounds. How will we ensure that we are we have not changed our system the one which we started with because we have already uh, doubled? Yeah, we have doubled. So the another question is what about the other degrees of freedom? Right? What about the psi tilde degrees of freedom? Yes. Okay. So those degrees of freedom less than three fields. Okay. Right? The psi tildes, okay, are less than three fields. Okay. Because they don't have part in interaction, they are, they are there, okay. but they are less than three fields. Okay. Okay. So they are completely unobservable. Mm -hmm. Right? If you want to, if you Look at the states involving psi. Mm -hmm. right? You will never produce any psi tilde state in the any scattering right? because there are free fields. Okay. And hence you can just forget about them. Okay. Yeah? They affect nothing in the observable state. Can you somehow integrate them out? Well, if you try to integrate them out, you will get a non local action. You will get a g in the local action. Okay. So you cannot integrate them out. Okay. And this difficulty essentially is related to the fact that in well, so it's related to it, it, it's a, it's, it is a cause of the fact that in type 2 is called diagonal, you can't write an action. That is all known, right? Because you have a cell dual 5 form, and a 4 form field with cell dual 5 form builds red. Right? There is no action that you can write down for that to be super right? Okay. And this is real, as I said, yeah, unless you double. Or increase the number of degrees of freedom. Right? It's not possible to write an action, a like local action. Nevertheless, the best thing you can do is to ensure that the additional degrees of freedom that you are putting in are just free fields and decoupled from the system completely. Can you recently cure for this problem was the, in the same time? Yeah, basically it's with because of this uh, by using this language. Okay. 
Okay. So the fact that psi tilde is a free field, okay, that there is one set of free fields, you can also see from the equation of motion. Right? So if you look at the psi tilde equation of motion, How will you get the equation of motion? That's a variable with respect to psi theta. So you will get basically C0, C0 bar times L0, L0 bar plus L0 bar times psi minus G into L bar plus G bar plus G. So okay, that's a variable with respect to psi theta. And there is no interaction term in this equation of motion because this is all the psi tilde dependence the axle has. Okay, the interaction terms are independent of psi tilde. Okay. So this shows that this combination actually satisfies the free field equation. This is a factor of half? Because there are two psi tilde, so when you vary this factor of half goes away. And let's say that really psi minus the psi tilde. Okay, so this gives you free field equation of motion. Psi tilde has no propagator. Psi tilde, psi tilde has no propagator. Psi tilde, psi tilde. But psi tilde, psi has propagator. Psi tilde, psi. Because that's the outlier part, right? So, psi tilde, is it a dynamical field? Yeah, it's a dynamical field. Because psi tilde, psi is a propagator. If you look at the eigenvalues of this light phase, it has poles. When both are psi tilde and psi. Full 2 by 2 matrix has two sets of poles. Right? Because it's a non linear matrix. So it's dynamic, but it's free. And it's not like an auxiliary field, right? which can often be integrated out. <coughs> so this is different from adding an auxiliary field. And it's dynamic, but it's because it's free field. And it's free field in the sense it doesn't even dilate, right? Because this, of course, includes everything. Right? And gravitational interaction is also included in this straight field. So it's a free field, you just have to gravity. And that's the reason why you can just forget about this field. It doesn't overlap with any of the physics that we observe. Exactly. Because if you start the psi field right, and scatter, you'll never produce any psychic field, right? Not in the intermediate state, nor in the final state. Okay, so if you start with the psychic state, that may go to psi field. Well, that this basically this combination is free, right? So psi tilde, what it says is psi tilde on an independent field, right? It moves like psi minus g psi tilde. Right? This always satisfies the free field equation of motion. Okay? And hence that decouples. The particle corresponds to this will of completely decoupled from the place of the system. Because this this solution is a playable, right? Yeah. Some combination of psi and psi tilde, not just psi tilde. Well, that depends on the okay. It's a question of linear transform. That if you consider a truncated Green's function, right? Where you take out the external propagators, <coughs> then every vortex only involves psi. There's no psi tilde, you don't have to talk about psi tilde at all. Okay. This is reflecting that if you have, if you put the external propagators in, okay, if you put a psi tilde and psi, this propagator is not zero. Right? But psi psi propagator is related to this. This part of the amplitude is identical in the two, in the two places. Right? So if you put a psi tilde, you will get a g, you will get a <coughs> no g. Right? If you put a psi, you will get a g. <coughs> and that's why this combination will always decouple at the level of the Green's function. Okay? But for H by X, you want to truncate at Green's function. Right? You remove the external points, you put them by inverse. So, truncated Green's function has only psi. Right? So, whether psi decouples or whether this decouples can be a, a matter of conversion, it's just a question of legendary transform. But at the end, the upshot is that there is one set of states right, which are completely free, they don't scatter. And the scattering of the other set of states can be computed by thinking of the interaction term that I added. Yesterday, okay. and a proper that's all you need to calculate these functions. <laughs> so, this shy not operating in physical process, that means that shy are minus 
psi theta minus 1 is some, if you just it's See, same inverse I mean, you have to decide the distinguish between the one pi action versus the Green's function, generating function for the Green's function. They are legendary transforms of each other. Right? So the psi decouples or this combination decouples, right? Depends on whether you are dealing with the Green's function or the one pi action. If you are dealing with Green's function, then it is this combination that decouples. Right? If you are looking at the level of one pi action, right, then psi is what? Psi, yeah, psi tilde is not exactly. Right? Because delta and psi tilde is this. <coughs> this is the equation, this is the field, field right? But where is it coming from? This is coming from the psi tilde equation. Now, the, the thing about the confusion was that psi tilde minus 1 belongs to h minus 1. And psi minus 1 also belongs to h minus 1. Yeah, but there are two, two different fields. Like, you can have two different scales, like right? phi and pi. Both belong to the same representation of Lorentz. Both take this, take phi over the same field space. But there are two different fields. Similarly, psi and psi are two different set of fields. Yeah? That for every state, there is a doubling. Yeah? You have a gravitational and a dual and a, uh, and a spark. Yeah? That can happen. Except that, I mean, that, that causes problem with that two gravitons. Yeah? That normally causes problem. But here, because one of these gravitons is completely free field, yeah? you will never see it in any you know, physical form. These are just some auxiliary fields which are needed in the intermediate steps. Right? Yeah, well, we, it's not an auxiliary field has a specific definition that it can be integrated out. That is, kinetic term is zero. So, these are not auxiliary fields in that sense. There are some fields which help us in driving the action, but at the end, it goes away. It's just the free field and the density term. So, the Feynman diagram that we calculate is the size size part of this. Exactly. So the Feynman diagram is exactly what we have been talking about. Right? Interaction involves psi, propagator involves psi. Psi tilde has just come in the, on the way to give rise to this propagator that we want. So without producing psi tilde, I mean, it is not possible to write. You have to write an all local action. You have to put a G inverse in the action. Right? If you are willing to use non local action like the inclusion of G inverse, then you can write. Because then the, once you invert it, you will get a G. Will that be equivalent to this? Yeah, as far as the water body Feynman diagrams are concerned, you will not see any fine because uh, water body will use the propagator and the uh, 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 interactions, right? Okay. The problem will come to so try to identify physical states, right? Because then you will look at the kinetic term and look at all possible zeros of the kinetic term, right? Yeah, they are to see what are the zeros in the G inverse, maybe not. Right? Because G inverse is a non-local operator, so how, how many eigenstates it has becomes a complicated problem. Whereas, as you will see in this form, okay, finding the physical state spectrum is straightforward. But if we could find uh, for that non-local... Uh, yeah, if you could find, right? will that be... If you could write a gauge invariance, for example, mm -hmm. if you could write on the proper gauge invariance theory without any ambiguity, mm -hmm. then it will give the same result. Right? But you know that typically this uh, chi or you know, chi 0 right, has not held. Right? And hence it's not clear that chi 0 inverse is the way defined. You have to make some additional definition of what we mean by chi 0 inverse. If I just redefine uh, this combination to be psi t, that doesn't help, right? No, it will not help because now the interaction terms. We will call psi tilde and psi, right? See, it will look. See, the physics terms depend on field right? So obviously, if you define this as chi, I mean, chi is chi and psi are different variables. You get the same physics at the end. But it will make your life more complicated. Right? Because Can you just repeat also the psi tilde equation of Mosser came out to be this? Yes. And then from where what are we uh, saying that this, uh, so this, this, this this combination psi minus g psi tilde is a field. Is a field. Is a field. Exactly. Right. So this means that at the level of the Green's function, right? If you use this and a bunch of sides, the result should vanish. Right. And that I mean the reason that this combination is because is reflected in the fact that psi tilde psi. If you have a psi tilde Green's function and psi Green's function, right? 
as a green spot, not as one PI. Yeah. 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 Then psi tilde will involve a propagand on the x psi tilde psi. And then this law is the interaction. Psi will involve a psi psi, and then this law is the interaction. And once you are gone in here, you never produce any psi tilde anymore. Okay. So basically, it is a question of how this propagand differs from this one. That between them, there is a factor also. And that's what is reflecting that is this combination that we have. So at the level of green sponsor, it's this combination, if you put it in a yeah. uh, path in detail, right, you will find that that always vanishes. Right. It has no correlation with the level of anything else. At the level of Feynman diagram, so you look at one PI or truncated Feynman diagram, so I have removed external propagators, then it is the psi which survives and psi will determine. So here there's two different state, ways of stating the same thing. Right? In, the, in the truncated language, the reason that psi tilde decouples is because this subtrum is the equation of motion for psi tilde. Now, if you write down any uh, string theory, what kind of field contact will change? Well, the structure will be the same? Yes, exactly. The structure will be the same. Yeah, the Okay. So, for example, for type 2, for type 2, all that will change is the psi will become psi minus 1, psi minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus psi, minus 1, minus half, plus psi minus half, minus 1, plus psi minus half, minus half, and psi tilde. Will be psi tilde minus 1 minus 1 plus psi tilde minus 1 minus 1 minus t half. So, okay, I like exactly the same structure that I Hold G. Also has to be defined. G is identity in the NSNS sector. It's psi zero in the minus one, or it's a identity in the NSNS sector. Psi zero in the NSR sector. Psi zero bar in the RNS sector, and psi zero psi zero bar in the R sector. Okay, but uh, this structure will be the that will be the Why do we need uh, only this minus 3 half picture number? Why minus 3 half? Yeah. <coughs> well, without minus 3 half, I mean, you want to, know, want to insert a g. Right? So minus 3 half is a natural one because first of all it has non zero inner product to minus half. The other will not have a g. And then minus 3 half, minus 3 half will have a single g. So working only with minus half picture, we wouldn't have a problem with kind of data. Working only with minus half picture, you don't get a normal local candidate. Okay. There you have the G inverse, which is not a good operator. Okay, you can also see from here, right? If you put an eliminated psi tilde, you'll get a G inverse sign. Right? And then that, when you substitute, you'll get a G inverse in that. In physics, where this kind of thing is necessary. 
doubling of things? I don't know of any specific example, but I think I mean, once you have this, in, whenever you have a viral theory, for example, right, for which you want to write down an action, you can follow it simply. Right? With type 2, for example, one can do this because of the cell dual form, but this you can generalize to any cell dual field state. But whenever you have cell dual field state, that cell dual constraint is not coming out of action, it's some condition that you impose by hand. And but by following this doubling thing, you can actually uh, like that. Is this like a uh, possible Yakov action, what we do? Because uh, the work of Paul Yakov action, you have R uh, with the application inverse R, and you can introduce a scalar field to write the local action. Is it similar, or is it really more like a similar? In the Paul Yakov action, let's see. In the Newville action, because in the Paul Yakov action, of course, it's particularly low, right? It's a root gr. I mean, because in polyacrylic action, you write the coupling to gene, right? But now, <coughs> uh, when I, I, I was saying polyacrylic, I was thinking to the um, curvature times inverse curvature times the uh, curvature. So f delta minus one f. Yeah, last what do we think that out the Yes, in the matter of uh, out the matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that is generally non-local. We are in the body, you have integrated out matter. Yeah. So you don't expect a local action. But you can introduce a, an additional field to write a local a action in this case. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know if that is exactly equivalent. It could be. I mean I'm not completely sure. Now what if we think if it has zero modes, if the kinetic operator? Yeah, exactly. That, that's the part that uh, the sky is zero typically doesn't have an inverse because it has zero eigenvalues. Right? Yeah, but there isn't it isn't common in physics to have zero mode. Yes, but whenever I don't know whether you, you can play this game whenever it has a zero mode. <coughs> yeah, that it has to have some mm -hmm. uh, structure. See, kinetic component of course has mm -hmm. having zero modes is not common. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Then you have inverse, right, which has some poles. Which can certainly happen. Those are after all the physical things. Here it's more complicated, right? Because you cannot write a kinetic term. See, just like in type of material, kinetic operator means zero more, even scalar field kinetic operator, right? Has uh, high box pi, right? Box has zero modes, right? Which gives you the uh, physical space. But in a chiral theory, you just cannot write an action. You have uh, this guy that for five for three scan. So this trick is designed for those kinds of theories. Once you decrease the number of fields, uh, you only do this minus to the one and this two and three pictures are sort of thrown away while writing the program. While writing that? Uh, this program. Yeah, exactly. So that's right. I mean, the point is, this theory is not completely equivalent to the original theory. It's equivalent to the theory that you want, plus a bunch of free fields. But because these free fields do not interact with anything else, right? so the full uh, spectra will contain the usual spectra, double. Okay? But half of these particles are completely free. Right? They have no interaction, not of interaction. And hence, in all Despite itself, right? If we imagine that we are made of the particles which are interacting, right? we'll never have any way of knowing about the particles which are not interacting. Right? Our interaction is not going to see them at all. They are just free fields. Then if it, if it is like, if you have the standard model and if you add a free scalar field theory, right? we'll have no way of knowing. Except through gravity, right? Typically, what happens is when you add a free scalar field theory, you may have no, no interaction, but in gravity comes to everything. This is a peculiar theory, but even in gravity doesn't come, right? Because gravity is already included in the interaction, right? String theory contains gravity. And cycle is all interacting even after including gravity. Right? So, in this sense, it is a real free field. It's an unusual kind of free field because in a theory of gravity, normally you don't see any field, right? 
where everything has come into gravity. I mean, at least it will contribute to the vacuum energy density and the cosmology concept, but this will not even do that. No, it will not even do that, yeah. Because it doesn't come into gravity at all, right? So, I mean, no experiment will ever see this thing. Exactly. <laughs> no experiment will ever see this. This is the true course. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is complete out. These are just tricks to avoid the zeros in the... Exactly. Yeah, these are just tricks. I mean, think of this as a set of tricks which can give that. Give that. Okay, if you are happy with the Feynman rules, right, then you don't even need these yeah. tricks. The problem with the Feynman rules is that the Feynman rules do not quite tell us what are physical states or not, what are physical states and so on. Then I don't do these. It's a gauge fixed theory, right? I mean, so that's the point I'm going to come to next. But uh, before I do that, let me fix the knowledge. <coughs> No, not yet. We have to write a gauge infinite theory. Otherwise, only then we will know that there is an interaction term of that theory. Okay. That, of course, you don't know what a gauge infinite theory is. Okay. At the level of a gauge fixed theory, we know that cycles and cycles not interact. Okay. And that is good enough because that means that the Feynman diagram calculus and cycles will never happen. So, it is We have no knowledge of cycles. Coming fixture, right? We used 
the blue in W1, W2 equal to Q. And then we try to introduce the corresponding V's for the variation of Q. Okay. Those are given by these. And this Q2 the L0 and Q1 to the L0 basically generates this scaling of W2 that you have to perform before you do it to W1. So there's a matrix element between five C's are sitting here. But now the claim is that this will have to be accompanied by a factor of minus 2 pi i inverse times g squared. Okay, and I will now see why. Maybe GS factors are easy to figure out, so let me put them in here. So when I try, actually this is not what we want to indicate. Right? If you remember the way we defined our curly bracket, this was multiplied by GS to the power 2 g minus 2. Right? Similarly, this was to be this is multiplied by GS to the power 2 g on minus 2. GS. This is a genus G1 contribution, so when I have to define a Carly bracket, I multiply by GS to the 2 G minus 2 and sum. So this has to be multiplied by GS to the power 2 G1 minus 2 and GS to the power 2 G1 minus 2. So you see that there is a mismatch. That is, G is equal, of course, G1 plus G2, right? So that matches, but there is minus 2 here, the minus 4 here, and hence we need a GS square. So now let's look at the 2 pi i factors. So left hand side, if we remember that the factor of minus 2 pi i to the power minus 3 g so minus 3 plus n, m plus n. Okay, that's part of the definition of this omega. Right hand side, we will have a factor of minus 2 pi i to the power minus 3 g1 minus 3 plus g1 plus g1 minus 2 pi i minus 3 g1 minus 3 plus n2 plus n2 Okay, so this is the factors in seven to omega and now if you use a fact that g is g1 plus g2 and m plus n is m1 plus m2 plus n1 plus n2 minus 2 okay, irrespective of whether you are doing Nebuchadnezzar or Ramon let me put a g here so that it that is right for Nebuchadnezzar and Ramon so, irrespective of whether you do your own new short for Ramon, this is true. Okay. The total number of punctures on the left is equal to the total number of punctures on the right. But total number of punctures on the yeah, on the glued surface is equal to, equal to the total number of punctures on the original surface minus 2 because 2 has been used for blood. Uh, so, if you use these two, Relations. You can easily verify that you need the minus 2 pi i inverse for the two sides okay. Because here the total factor is minus 3 and there's a minus 2 from here. 
So minus 3 minus 2. Okay, that makes it 2 pi i to the 5 minus 2 pi i to the 5. These two together gives you minus 2 pi i to the 6. Okay, it's 0 and 1 and 1 like that. This gives you minus 2 pi i to the 6. So you need to remove one factor minus 2 pi i. Okay, that's why we have this factor. So now let's see what it implies for the problem. Okay, using the fact that there is a gs squared plus minus 2 pi i inverse. The propagator basically comes after performing the q integrals. Okay. So use q and it will be minus s minus i theta q bar and it will be minus s plus i theta. So dq equals dq bar dq by q over dq bar dq bar. This is basically ds plus i d theta goes ds minus i d theta which gives you minus 2i ds over d theta I'm sorry, do we need there minus 2 by i inverse or minus 2 by i? Minus 2 by i inverse right hand side omega contains this much then right? here is, this factor is extra so doesn't need to compensate it. I mean, there are gs to the minus 2 was extra. And yeah, yeah, because the point is that gs to the minus 2 was not included in the definition of omega, so I put the explicit gs to the minus 2. Now I'm seeing the omega itself. Okay. If you look at the definition of omega that I have given, mm -hmm. okay. that contains a minus 2 pi and to that part. That part, right? Okay. The left hand side contains minus 2 pi to that part. Okay, that is hidden inside omega. We are not multiplying that. Uh, this by omega, that and Okay. This one contains a minus 2 pi to the power that they are not Right? That's an arbitrarily put in by hand in normalization of omega, right? Okay, all the gummy fixes etc. are independent of that or of that uh, outside that. So the right hand side will have an extra minus 2 pi to that factor there and minus 2 pi to that factor there. And now I'm saying that if we didn't have this. If we didn't have this extra factor over here, the total number of minus 2 pi parts that we will get from here will be one less than the minus 2 pi part that we will get from here. Then, then, so, but GS was different, you see? Because GS was not included in the definition of omega. Okay, I explicitly multiplied by GS. Okay, so GS I multiplied. So, if you are included in the, the GS factors inside, then you will not see this GS explicitly in that. Right? I'll count. Okay. If you want to do it that way, then I'll write this as this times GS to the power to G minus 2. Okay? Because this is the total factor on the left hand side. Okay. This I'll write <coughs> as GS to the power <coughs> to G1 minus 2, GS to the power 2 G1 g2 minus 2 okay. and then I have a gs square is that okay yeah, but here the only this is very confusing is because I have explicitly written this gs factors there because that whereas minus 2 pi i factors were included in the definition of omega I didn't include the GS factors in the definition of omega. Right? That's why if I am writing the expression for A1 to A n, right? I sum over all genus. And I explicitly have to put in the factor of GS to be power 2 minus 2. Right? But I could have included it. So then you will not see this in this formula. Right? But you will see it here. So is this clear? So what we will get is that we will get an integral s equal to 0 to infinity integral theta equal to 0 to 2 pi minus 2 i s over d theta 
to the four minus s and the locus is the part. And then this factor of minus two point five inverse is yes, right. So this gives you theta integral gives you two pi, which takes care of this two pi over here. The minus i from here takes care of the minus i from here, so you are left with a factor of 2. So this gives you 2 g square times n0 plus n0 point inverse delta n0 plus n0 So the propagator is not what you have been using, the propagator has this 2 g square extra factor. Right? Which basically means that the kinetic term is to be divided by 2 g square. So type 2 I have already said that 
What is I? Yeah, is I. So what I do is rather identical, <laughs> except that psi now has four sectors, psi tilde also has four sectors. Yeah, then I just take the psi tilde structure. Of course, the definitions of these will change yeah, because the correlation function that you calculate will be in the psi two theory and not in the theory. Yeah, but the structure doesn't change. So this action is good for deriving the Feynman rules. That is all you need to derive the Feynman rules because from this you calculate the propagator, then you use those propagators to uh, find Feynman rules and it produces the string amplitude directly. However, there is, this is not till, still quite satisfactory. And the reason is that this, if we just look at this action, it will not tell you immediately which states are physical. Now, what to do to, to determine the physical states? Right? You are given an action. So, you first look at the quadratic part, right? the free mm -hmm. field theory. The free field theory equations of motion, in this case, we have already seen one is g zeros to the free and the quadratic equations of motion. And the second one is And once you understand that, then we know that there are many that 
there are additional conditions that the external states have to satisfy, which are the conditions for gauge invariance. Right? If you have a gauge, if you have a gauge theory, then not every external state is physical. Right? If you think of, for example, the electromagnetism not in, in Lorentz gauge, right? or in the Feynman gauge, then all components of the gauge field they are solutions to the linear equation of motion. Right? If you take box A, we equal to zero, which is the equation in the Feynman gauge. Right? It has four polarizations. But you know that only two of those four polarizations are actually physical states. But that will not see if somebody has given you just a gauge fix like that. Right? Because uh, just a gauge fix like that will not have any knowledge of what are physical states and what are not. That's an external thing that you post. So the best you can hope for is to find a gauge invariant Lagrangian, like which has a correct physical state content. And at the same time, if you have the property that after gauge fixing, that gauge invariant Lagrangian, we arrive at this action. Right? Then you will have the uh, base drop both because you have the correct physical state spectrum and a gauge invariant uh, and a uh, and, uh, gauge fixed action which gives the correct case matrix. So, uh, like, while we started constructing this uh, action, like we started with the shy, it belongs to the uh, inverse case of picture number minus half or minus one, yes. and for diamond sectors also minus three half sector minus two. Yes. But then we we, we we had an information of those Hilbert spaces from the first one dice version. Yes. But now we, we we want to like use hold of that uh, graph or yeah. So of course we have to ensure that the either the physical state spectrum that we identify. Agree with the fast okay. <coughs> But at the same time, okay, so follow from a gauge invariant Lagrangian, whose gauge fixing leads to this. Yes, so there are two independent con constants appear. Okay, then they have to agree. So if, if, if I now obtain a gauge uh, invariant uh, action, I, I, I can I can like forget that there was some Hilbert space and all. I, I will start with this action, find out, like quantize it and uh, obtain equation of motion, find uh, the spectrum and that should agree with the physical uh, the spectrum of which, part which part. I, I would have obtained independently in the from uh, string, uh, from first part 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 part. But, uh, but at, at this level, while I have a gauge fixed version, not a gauge invariant version, uh, how am I exactly seeing that the spectrum is not the full, like, no, uh, I mean, I have something extra. Because the gauge fix of the linear the linear equations of motion, right? so every solution to linear equation of motion has a plane wave. Right? So you create the creation analysis and operators for that uh, plane wave. Right? And that's a part of it. Yeah, just like if somebody had given you the uh, electromagnetic, the Lagrangian of electromagnetism, given the high gauge. You just need the four AB, which are four scalars, quantize it in the standard way. Yeah. There will be some uh, annoyance because A0 has no kind of sign kinetic term. Okay. But at the field level, you can you say, okay, you ignore it, okay. you quantize it, and you will find there are four particles, okay. four massless particles, which you know is not correct. But at the, at the gauge fixed level, you cannot uh, distinguish between what is physical, what is not physical. That's an additional input that we know because we know that the QED Lagrangian and Lorentz gauge actually is a gauge fixed version of some other Lagrangian, which is gauge To match at this level, I have to in input something by hand. If I have to match with the physical space, exactly. I have to yes. Yeah, we have to input some, input something by hand. But if I go to the gauge invariant version, and while using equation of motion and spectrum from that, and also keeping track of the fact that there is a gauge invariant, so I should mod out some states which are exactly like the gauge equivalents. Yeah. Then I will directly obtain without putting anything by hand. Exactly. So, uh, this procedure that you said that uh, we should have, we can get some gauge invariant and then gauge fixed will arrive at this action. This procedure is not unique. Well, it's not unique up here. No. So that's why the what a full gauge invariant string field for is, is 
It's sort of there's an algorithm, right? Which tells you how to analyze that data. That you have to do some guess for. Okay. That's all included inside the definition of psi. If you remember the definition of psi p, I mean, this a1 to an, let me not distinguish the Ramon and Kuswars, right? This was, or let me do that again, a tilde 1 to a tilde n was sum over g gs to the power 2 to minus 2 and then integral over r gmn omega gmn 6 minus 6 plus k over plus k n of this is 1 to am a to the 1 to So this gs to g minus 2 is already included. Like for example, the g equal to 0 contribution that will involve all gs1 or gs1. Like which is uh, which nicely fits into the fact that the kinetic term is 1 over gs square. All the interaction terms at three level will have 1 over gs square. So there is a 1 over gs square in front of the whole action. This action is the full quantum action, right? And it includes the extra additional vertices that come for the quantum. Yes, exactly. That's it. Okay, this is the full quantum gauge invariant action, right? You have no idea where it came from, right? Meaning which gauge, how to gauge fix and arrive at this result. But this satisfies the property that if this is the action based on which you are trying to derive a control, it produces correctly the optional means functions. From here we only go to the degree level and no. Full loop level. <laughs> because the plumbing fixture, right? in the definition of the plumbing fixture, you also remove those which you got from there, right? If you remember RGM and the 25, right? Mm -hmm. We remove all possible things that we can get by doing lower genus amplitudes, right? Which includes doing two functions of the same Riemann surface, right? So, suppose we have a contribution like this in the <coughs> amplitude, right? Mm -hmm. These have already been included in the solid lines. Okay. But you call the given you control the given right? Yeah, so you are not claiming at this stage where it came from. Okay. The claim is that if, if this is the action, this is not a quantum effective action. Oh, sorry, sorry. So that this is some action, right? Which is a little strange because normally if you can write down an action, it only has three level terms, so 1 over gs squared. Everything else comes from loops and so on, right? This is not an action of that kind. Okay. Here, even at quantum level, you have to add terms. Okay, that's why this gs2 to g minus 2. Okay. So this action has a structure that there is 1 over gs squared piece, then there are other terms of order of order gs to the 0, then there are terms of order gs squared, terms of order gs to the 4, and so on. All of these terms are there. Okay. You use these terms to calculate an amplitude to any given order in GS. Okay. So for example, when you are trying to calculate a one-loop amplitude, okay, you have to calculate explicitly the one-loop amplitude that you get from the zero sort of vortex, that that means one over GS squared terms, that is three-level vortex. Okay. But also you have to explicitly include anything that you can get by combining the three-level vortex with one copy of one-loop vortex. Because that's also a vortex, same order, right? One over GS squared times GS and the loop gives you a GS square. So this action is neither three level action, neither the, yeah, yeah it's not three level action. It has corrections of order GS, but it's not a quantum effective action. Okay? The one pure effective action is the property that you only do three level calculation with that, right? This is somewhere in between. That this is something that okay, you have to correct the action at quantum level to reproduce correct the string amplitudes. But it contains vertices which came from a higher vertices. The exactly. absence is different from usual electron. Exactly. It contains vertices which are for GSFI, but all those vertices have the feature 
then they are completely non-secure. Okay, all the regenerations are coming from explicit finite diagrams. Okay, so you have to add order gs square order gs to be four terms, but none of them contain any degeneration. Okay. So they are completely finite terms that you are here actually. So that's the important point that this action <coughs> has no uh, divergence at all. Okay, it's free from uh, divergence because the integral that you have to perform on modular space to define these is over the region of the modular space which has no generation. Maybe I will just write that result and then tomorrow you will see how it comes. So eventually we will see that the reason that you have to add these terms is order g s square and g s to be 4. The reason that you have to add these terms is because the path integral measured over the fields are not gauge invariant. So this additional term that you have to add basically correct for the gauge non invariance of the path integral. Okay, so they are not a one loop effective action. Okay, they are simply extra connection that you have to add to the action to correct for the Okay, It's like in a quantum field theory, this would be the analog of adding finite number of terms. So suppose you have a quantum field theory which has no UV divergence. Okay. But you have some gauge invariance and you have somehow uh, 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 devised a way to uh, uh, do your computations so that the loop corrections break gauge invariance. Okay, you have uh, your loop corrections as well, they don't respect gauge invariance. But they are going to restore gauge invariance by adding local terms. Okay, so those local terms are not the full one pair effective action. Those local terms are corrections that you have to add to compensate for the fact that the measure is not getting correct. These are the terms of that kind. And uh, what criteria of the theory says that we can always do this? Like that well, in the theory, you, know, yeah, you, you, you may not always be able to do this. Right? Because during anomalous, you cannot do this. In string theory, you can do this. In string theory, the point is you know explicitly what these terms are. Okay? You have constructed them. And we will see that the way you have constructed them guarantees that this action has gained invariance. This action or the action? The action that we will write down. Because this comes from case fixing a gain invariance. Okay. But because it is a little unusual, okay, we have to proceed in steps. So the first thing we will do is to say how to fix the classical action. Let's find out about the loop corrections, okay, because there you have to worry about measure and uh, various other things. Just ask the question that is it possible to write down the classical uh, actions for the theory, okay, which produces correctly the three level amplitudes. Okay, that's the first step. So step one. Write down. Classical action that reproduces Relaxing the B0 plus B0 bar constant. 
Yeah, because you are trying to write the gaining parent diagram. Yeah, and as I claimed earlier, the fact will uh, be zero plus be zero but constant is part of the gauge fixing. So you are lacking that constant. But we are restricting the lowest number to two because this is where the physical states were. Right? As I'll, I emphasized during the uh, procedure that the reason that we have to include these other host number states <coughs> is because those are the hosts that you get by gauge fixing. Okay? At three level, of course, you don't have any hosts. Right? You don't worry about hosts in uh, the gauge theory, that's fine. We restrict the states that you host number. Like the sign classically is the, the, like the sign 1 that we were doing this time. Like the psi 1? Uh, Split two digits, one side two side two. The, or side one, one or side two, side three, side four. The same that. No, no, that not. No. That that was based on the C zero bar. Annihilation by C zero and C zero bar and C zero and C zero bar, right? Ghost number was completely unrestricted for the size. I think we saw about the Grassmann parity. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, so your last one parity case, exactly. So this is the uh, beginning one, right? The host number two, which is uh, 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 okay. We also introduce a cycle in the class, right? which is h minus one plus h minus three half. But this also carries host number. And the claim, okay, which we will try to work on tomorrow, is that the following classical action gives the correct spectrum and correct case factors. How do we know that we cannot write another gauge invariant action 
with some different age group which by fixing and doing this we will reproduce once again this. Yeah, we could, but then the two absence will give the same S matrix. Right, so right. and the same spectrum. The two absence, in fact, you will have tried to try the various other things and at the tree level, yeah, that there are also, also other absence which exist, right? Which uh, give correctly. Then those are more extreme. They're high classical. It's not a general state in H minus one plus H minus one. You put some additional restrictions, right? and based on that, we will have written down <coughs> some actions. And but as long as the H fixed portion is the same, right? and the physical state spectrum is the same, then the H matrix should be identical. Yes, you will still start not completely. So, this is the tree level. This, is, this will be down near the tree level. Right? And then you will see the loop level up to more part. Because then you have to worry about the part. Right? Already contains all factors of GSS, right? So you don't need to do anything there. Just to comment, is it good to understand that like we we worked out the normalization for the tiny theta? Yes. Should be one over G squared. But like one way to see that that is only because like I am included or not included in omega uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the international term there is a gs to be equal to g minus 2 yes what my three level right these are the one over gs square this is a one over gs square but this of course you want only one over gs square right so you need a gs square in the top of it <coughs> that means you must have a one over gs square in the hand yeah this one over gs square is sort of uh, scales the gs to the 2g minus 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 2 part exactly and then then every with every g i have that yeah, extra power, power of gs compared to the that's inverse right. probability exactly yeah. 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 so basically at three level you figure out that the candidate term as well as the, the interaction terms will have one over gs square and then for every loop you just put an extra factor that's the easiest to figure out the part of this that you can talk about.